Hello, how's everybody doing? Hey, how's everybody's week going? It's been a long week. I'm exhausted. Oh, you're telling me it's it's definitely been a long week. It's been a great week, but it's been a long week for me. Uh, I, I've learned a lot this week with uh, uh, Pardot and marketing and fingers crossed, fingers crossed tomorrow, I will be taking my um, Pardot specialist certification. Yeah, so I've been studying. I failed at one time. And I will be taking my part out certification, uh, Aloha Nate. And so we'll see how that goes. Um, I am a very horrible, horrible, horrible test taker. And, um, but that's okay. Uh, I accept that. And the way I take, a, I like to take a look at that is, you know, your strengths and your weaknesses. My strengths are dev works. I like to get in there. I like to play. That's how I learn my weaknesses are exams. I hate taking exams. Yes, um, uh, thank you. And yes, the Sooners, go Sooners, ha ha ha. But uh, um, so that's one thing you, you need to know is you, you play to your strengths and understand your weaknesses. So when, when I say that, understand your weaknesses, failing doesn't bother me. I mean, of course, a little bit, right? Um, but when you understand that, uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't affect you as much. I mean, what I recognize. So, for instance, I failed the BA, and um, with the BA, what bothered me about failing the BA, and this was before I started doing the HOH. What this is what bothered me, and you'll recognize this as you go on beyond taking the admin test. And this is something that I'm going to try to develop and uh, help uh, with some of the other um, certifications as I develop study Salesforce with Steven. The admin, you get your playground. There is no playground. There is no dev org for the BA. I understand the BA a lot more now that I'm actually working, now that I'm doing user stories, now that I'm doing discovery calls, now that I'm doing this stuff. So I understand it a lot more. And I can tell you, if you're going to ask me, what should you do after you do your um, uh, admin? The BA. You should do the BA. That is going to help you with a job probably more than any other certification, especially if you want to go into consulting. And I say this specifically with consulting. Now, <clears throat> if you wanted to look into... Um, specializing in like um, admin developer or something like that. that. That's a different story. But some people ask, and I even ask this question myself, hey, what, what should I go for next? Where should I go? What do, I mean, what do I need to do? What's my next path? I was thinking platform app builder or something along those lines. And I really didn't want to do the BA, but now as I have more experience, it's definitely the BA, you know, and that is the direction that you should be going. And that's that's my suggestion. And, um, but right now I'm going to go for the Pardot specialist, the Pardot consultant, and then the BA. And that, that's the direction I'm going to go with. And, um, and then probably after that uh, admin advance, and um, then I'll probably knock out the platform app builder too, and then just continue building my skills. But <clears throat> um, miss the beginning, why BA? Because Luis, the BA is going to help you and give you the most impact with your first job. It really is, um, especially as you want to become a consultant. Uh, those are some of the bigger jobs out there. Even if you don't want to become a consultant, it's going to open up your world. It's a little bit more difficult because you don't have a playground to play with. with. Um, and a lot of times within that aspect, too, of the BA, it's more... What will you do in this scenario? Um, what is a user story, um, user testing, user acceptance, uh, user acceptance testing, um, uh, things along those lines, and uh, and so it's about interacting with people versus actually doing something with software. 
And that's a lot more of what BA is. Well, if you really think about it, a lot of this is work problems, you know? Um, and so everything we're doing really is word problems when it comes to Salesforce. But yeah, these are, so the BA is, in my opinion, a little bit more difficult. I mean, I went through uh, the trails now, something that's fortunate now, focus on the force. I like focus on the force. I really love them. They now actually have a study guide for BA too. Previously, when I went through it, they did not have a study guide. They just had questions. And I was knocking those questions out and I was doing really well with those questions. You know, so, but in, anyway, let's jump into it. Let's go into our dev org. Um, so we can go through some of these things. If there's something that you want to see, um, ask me and we will see about trying to do that. And um, just want to yeah, show my ahead. face. Uh -huh. I'm eating. <laughs> it's no I problem. I just want to show my face. I'm quickly grabbing a snack. So I didn't want to munch in your face. It's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so th no that's awesome um but let me i want to make sure i have actually multiple dev orgs open and i want to open this one okay good good i have the right dev org open because i'm going to uh kind of cheat and still i should say from this one and let me optimize this so for the recording there's no video there and let me open the chats so again um some ground rules um by all means Please take yourself off the mic, um, uh, put comments. If you have something you don't want to take yourself off the mic, put it in the comments. If I miss a comment, someone please uh, bring it up and um, we'll go from there. Uh, um, if I say anything wrong, 100%, if I say something wrong, you know I said something wrong, let's call me out. Uh, I don't want to be putting out any bad information there. Today, we're going to continue with our object manager and lightning app builder. I want to show you a few more things in here. Um, we want to go a little bit more deeper. I want to talk about um, a couple more functions with our lightning app builder. Some, some things I think that are pretty cool. Uh, we're going to take a look on, uh, possibly we may throw a couple of things together and make an app. So that way we can just do a page straight for our app. Then also, I want to show you um, really cool validation rules, a couple of formulas, and we'll, we'll start putting a couple things together. But right now, let's jump over here. And since we were talking about that app, um, oh, I know, for the app, I need to go to the app menu, right? That's where we're going to build an app. App manager, yes, 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 indeed. Okay, good. I was gonna see if anybody was gonna agree with me right there. So let's build an app real quick. So this is fairly easy. Now, this is a new feature, um, uh, being able to clone an app. That is actually pretty cool. Um, but right now we're just gonna click here on new lightning app. And what should we call this app? So. Um, again, we are building this app. Um, we're going to call this Salesforce. How about we call this Salesforce Stephen? Because this is going to be within, um, matter of fact, let's do this. We're going to do this. Since this is study Salesforce with Stephen and we're building this out, how about we call this um, Salesforce Admin? That's exactly what we'll call this. Um, and we're going to uh, put this one because we have many different cert uh, certifications, right? And we're gonna put Salesforce admin certification information students and instructors. So anything that's gonna deal with admin, that's what this app's gonna be for. Here, if we want to upload an image, we can. Um, matter of fact, let's see what kind of images we may have. A separate window is going to pop up. I don't believe you can see this window, but let me jump through a couple of things and see what I have to possibly. Um, oh, so you can see this window for the pictures. Oh, cool. All right. Well, that's excellent. Um, let's see here. Let me go to... Yeah, we'll do this and we may just throw in, um, yeah, let's see if that one will do. Hey, take a look at that one. That one will be just fine. 
Now, what is cool is use the app's image and color instead of the orgs theme. Let's do that. What does that mean? Anybody, what does that mean? Okay, so we got background color and theme. Okay, change default Salesforce blue color. It will pull the colors from the app. We're getting closer. Okay, matches the image. Yes, so there we go. It's going to pull the colors from the image. And then now we're going to use those colors from that image for the app specifically. Okay, good. All right, so we're going to click next. Now we're going to have our standard navigation. We could do our standard, our console navigation. Um, we could set this up to where we have our service setup, our normal setup, our marketing setup. Here, we're just going to have our normal setup. Um, support form factors, desktop and phone. We want this app to be accessible from both. But we could set it up towards only desktop or phone. Now, what's unique about these two buttons here, these two checkboxes? Excuse me. These two check checkboxes, app personalization. There we go. It restricts, it locks it, right? Okay, um, there, and that, that's exactly what I was looking for. And essentially it does exactly what we want it, uh, what it says right there. Disabled in user personalization of nav navigation items in this app. If you don't want whoever's using this app to change your navigation items, click right here, right here. You're just gonna click right in that box. That way they can't change it, it won't be done. Okay, disable temporary tabs from items outside this app. You're gonna go ahead and click right there. Pretty simple, let's click next. <clears throat> okay, so utility items. I was in an org and I saw some really cool utility items and I am trying to remember, it just escaped my brain. But as you can see, you can have a uh, um, phone call app. Uh, let's see here, Luis ask, <clears throat> is asking, what is the second one? Well, you let's go back. Find it. You explained it, never mind. You okay. explained it. Okay, good. All right. So a utility item is when you build an app, you can have certain functions down here. Um, for instance, if you have a VoIP, voice over internet protocol, I actually have one for my phone, not for Salesforce. For, I could probably find a connector and tie it to it. Um, so that way I can have a second phone number. But I have that for my phone as well. And But you can connect that to where when you open this app, you have many things down here. You can add a calculator down here. Um, one thing that I remembered, and you know, the funny thing is for the life of me, I know this was on the certification. I've seen this many times because I took the admin certification many times. Macros, what does macros do? And this is a utility item that you could set down here. It helps for repetitive actions. For some reason, I do not know why I remember that, but it helps for repetitive actions. It helps for repetitive actions. It helps for repetitive actions. What's it do? It helps for repetitive actions. It makes it quicker. What's it do? It helps for a repetitive action. Oh, I'm going to quit repeating myself now about macros, right? It helps for repetitive actions. Um, now, see, I haven't explored that. That's why I think it's funny. <laughs> so Tiana asked, such as what? I don't know. <laughs> so I actually have not explored that one. Um, but see, Macros is right here. Yeah. Um, so I have not actually explored that one. Um, but yes, there, uh, uh, there are questions or a mar uh, macros on the assessment. Um, and that's something that uh, uh, Louise said, yeah. So I find that funny. I, and I have seen that question many, many times. But um, yes, Quip, I do remember Quip being on there. And so you can have multiple things on there. Um, matter of fact, I do remember that from work on one of our apps that we have, Quip was on there, um, which was pretty cool. 
Um, and there are other things you can add on there too, but they're just little utility items. Um, okay, cool. So um, uh, uh, Simpson said macros is like a quick text. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, and then Louise says, aren't macros just like shortcut keys to run a thing? Again, I am not sure. It looks like that Sim said that uh, they're they're like a quick text. So um, they possibly can be. Again, I haven't explored those. So I don't want to lead you down to the wrong ro route. But I do know one thing, that every question that I was asked is they were for repetitive actions. <laughs> and I know I got that one right. Uh, um, well, I was pretty confident I got that right. Okay, so now we're going to add stuff to our app. <clears throat> so, for instance, we definitely want our counts on there. What else should we add to our app? Because remember, let's think of this this way. Now we're building our app. Okay, I'm going to have my team. I'm going to have my users, my volunteers. This is our sales study Salesforce with Steven app, specifically Salesforce admin. This is to help everybody to where if we're marketing anything, because it's completely free, we want to collect people's information, their first name, last name, email, stuff like that. Excellent article. Thank you very much, Sim. Thank you. Um, put a great uh, article in there from help.salesforce.com about explaining macros. And um, it probably goes a lot deeper into that. Um, I will see about trying to make sure I take some of the stuff you put in the chats especially like this article right here. Um, I want to make sure that you also get credit for this. And then when I post it, I want to make sure that uh, um, I, when I post this online with a video and on YouTube, that um, I also give you credit and we uh, put that there in YouTube and on LinkedIn too. So thank you very much. That, that's incredible. So what other things, we already have accounts here. What other things do we need to put in this app? Anybody. Definitely need to get our student in there. Yep, 100%. So we want our students over there. Okay, good. What else? Instructor, yep. If I could ever do this correctly. No, I can't. Instructors, there we go. What else do you think we need over there? What other um, contacts? Yep, we definitely want our contacts over there. Here we go. Any other standard objects do you think that we need over there? Probably don't need opportunities. Campaigns, I think that's a good idea. I think a campaign is probably a good idea. And the reason why is we can access campaigns specifically for admin, admin accounts right here in this app. So I think that's a good idea. What else do you think we should have in there? Anything else? I mean, accounts, students, um, leads, yeah, we could go in there with leads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because leads turn into accounts. Uh, they turn into um, contacts. Uh, reports. I like it. Reports. What else should go with the reports? Dashboards. There we go. And I think that should be about it. Reports and dashboards. Files. Um. Yeah, we can. Um, we, we can put files on there, but I don't think that's completely necessary um, to put files on there. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and put it on there. We'll do that. And I think that's probably good about now. Then for profiles, we're definitely going to put our admin profile on there. And then we can build out more profiles uh, later too. Um, I'm not going to put chatter on there. The reason why is the reality of it is um, so far for all the clients I've actually dealt with, only one has used chatter. Everybody else uses Slack. They use Asana. They use Jira. They use some other platform besides chatter. Yeah, chatter really isn't used. I mean, I was actually shocked to see that uh, uh, this one company I still uses chatter. And um uh, but yeah, so that that's going away. Now, um, let's see here. Now I want to be able to rearrange. I want to be able to see my app, see our app. Where should I go real quick? All right, good, fantastic. App menu. 
Here we go, because the app menu is an easy place to rearrange things. So our app was, come on down, where to go? Salesforce admin right here at the bottom. We want to move you all the way up to the top. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. And that's good to go. And let's go into our app. Excellent. Excellent. Now, there is one thing that I forgot to add to the app. And let's do that right now. Um, and we'll do this real quick like. And what we're going to do, can anybody think of what we need to add to the app? I just noticed it myself as soon as we went to the app. A home page. <laughs> That's right, a home page. There we go. And this is obviously we can um, rearrange everything the way we want it to. So home, accounts, contacts, students, instructors, campaigns, Let's move our leads right there. Oh, no, you know what? Let's put our campaigns, leads, reports, dashboards, files. Okay, that's fine. Now we'll save this. Let's come back over here. Refresh. And we have our homepage right here. Fantastic. So now that we've done this, let's go back in to our object manager. What I want to do, first thing I want to do is I want to come over here to students. I want to finish building out our students a little bit because when we come take a look at Fred Flintstone as a student, we have our first name, our last name. We want to build out under our student. What, what What's a little bit more information on the fields we want? What do you think? Okay, email. Email is definitely important. So we'll get to email. How about age? Okay, ID number, um, yeah, we can if we want. Um, but I think age is important. So with the age, why, why should age be important? I mean, because we are talking about Salesforce, right? Okay, to add them to relevant classes. Yeah, definitely. Um, I would definitely say to our relevant classes. Um, but again, we're talking about Salesforce specifically. Um, I will just uh, do that. And student layout, that's fine. I should have done save and no again. But um, because what if the, what if someone doesn't want to give us their age? Okay, that's fine. But if they're under the age of 18 and they want to learn Salesforce, we probably want to make sure that we're covering our butt here. You know, hey, let's make sure that we're getting parents' permissions, you know, things along those lines. So what should we do if they're under the age of 18? I mean, I'm going to want something else to identify that they are under the age of 18. So maybe if that's gonna be the case, so if they are under the age of 18, then what kind of field should I have? Okay, we can have a date of birth. Okay, there's a formula. How about let's do this? Let's do this. If they're under the age of 18, I'm gonna say, let's do a pick list. Right. And there's a reason why I'm going with a pick list here. So um, uh, right here, I'm going to say, uh, let's see here, over, under 18, enter the values. And I'm going to put over 18, under 18. 
is the student over? You may want to make it 18 and over to capture people who may be 18. Um. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, good point. Now say that again, make it 18 and over? Yes, like age 18 and over as one option and then under 18 as another option. Yep, that is true. Okay, so do 18 and over. Okay, yep, yep, I, I, I understand. So we'll do 18 and over and then under 18. How's that? <laughs> that was a great observation. Yeah. Um, there we go. 18 and over. That's perfect. Is this, uh, and then we're going to do this way. Excellent. Thank you very much. Did not even think of that. All right. So we're going to next, next and save. All right. I want to make sure. Okay. So now let's look into this way. Let's come back over here. We created our two new boxes. Let's refresh. So now let's say that Fred Flintstone, let's come over here and um, we have Fred and let's finish filling this information out. Flintstone and then instructor. We're going to put the instructor here. Now let's say we come over here and put age 17. And then come over here. Now, why isn't that working? Interesting. Hmm. Let's do something. Let's save that. Oh, you know what? I think I know what I did. No. Interesting. One. Now, why isn't that letting me move on from there? I think you have to go back to the um, field setup and see what happened. Well, or maybe. Yeah. yeah, we'll definitely do that. We'll definitely do that, but that was interesting. Let's see what I did wrong here. So the maximum length could be three numbers, zero decimal points. Uh, someone in the comments said that you had to choose the pick list and you chose the number. Cancel. What, for the age? No, so for the age, you should only be able to put a number in. Mm -hmm. because over here if we take a look right here it's a number Steve can you open this field we can walk through all of this sure so isn't the problem is in the pick list because we have to see the pick list value age is working we are able to add the number there yeah let's go ahead and go over here because I have not added anything under the um, pick list. So let's go to here. So there's nothing dependent right now currently <clears throat> in between the pick list and the number. We, I think we did not add the values. Don't we have to do the default value or? Oh no, we, we, we added the values. Mm -hmm. So uh, watch, I'll, I'll show you right here. Let me go ahead and go to uh, cancel. And then so um, the way we check the values, go ahead. So if you're creating a pick list, then you do not need to create two different uh, or age 18 separate. You have to just create one age. Inside that, you have to create the pick list. Well, right? so 
that's that's not actually not the case so what's going on with uh, the pick list here this is try to put the age seven uh 18 or up let's to just 18. try let's try 46 save hmm let's do something else let's do a refresh interesting Because it's not even giving us an error. I'm telling. You. Okay, there's 46. All right, that's good. That saved. Okay, good. It was a refresh. That's exactly what it was. It was a refresh. So that's all I had to do is refresh it again. Okay. So, fantastic. See, sometimes even though those popped up, it was a couple of times we had to refresh. Thank you, everybody, for... Uh, uh, <laughs> I am so happy that we all came together and was trying to troubleshoot this. That is fantastic. I'm very curious. Like Salesforce is used so frequently, and we have to do refresh so many times because there is always like we are doing changes. Why it does take this much time? Um, that I these, can't. These I, are playgrounds, though. But no, this is oh, true. They do. Okay. Um, they do dedicate a lot less uh, bandwidth to their playgrounds. Um, that is 100% true. I, when I'm working in um, production orgs, I typically don't have, most of them I only have to refresh once. Um, now I am fully prepared to ref refresh a couple of times um, based off of habits that I have built from uh, the dev orgs. Because remember, it's not a playground, it's a dev org. Or they are a little bit different, but pretty much the same thing. So um, thank you. Thank you, everybody. And um, so now what I want to show you now, this should, if I come over here, let's change this to 17. This is what I want to show you here. Perfect. Now, those don't work well together, right? So let's jump back here and let's go into a validation rule. Let's create a validation rule saying <clears throat> that for one or and or, and because this isn't even mandatory. So that's not even a mandatory one because maybe most people don't want to give us their age and that's okay you don't have to give us your age some people do some people don't and um but if they do select um under 18 and it's saved then shouldn't age be mandatory yeah i definitely agree with you there if, if under 18 is selected, age should be mandatory. Kind of like that same error that we were kind of just going through, but an error should pop up. An error should pop up. So um, now I kind of give the answer away. How do we do that? A validation rule. That's exactly right. We do it under a validation rule. So <clears throat> within this validation rule, Let's jump back over here. Now I can tell you, and we're going to call this validation rule under 18. Is the student under 18? If yes, then the age should be populated. Now, with this one, and I'm hoping, now I can tell you, for every formula, there's a thing called Google, right? I Google. And or um, if you, Stephen Trumbull has a course. He's on LinkedIn, and he also has a course. Um, I don't think it's that expensive. Fantastic course. I've gone through it many, many times. And um, uh and he has, he's great with formulas, great, great with formulas. But um, this one is going to be an and. And yes, I am cheating because I have my formula right over here on my other screen because I don't remember all this off the top of my head. Now, when we have an and, this is one important thing that I've learned. You can use and for only, and I'll say this again, only two functions. So if you want to combine two things, you can use and for only two of them. 
Now, we have um, we have specific functions for specific categories. For instance, with um, this field, what kind of field is this? Number. We're looking at over, over. Uh, oh, under. pick list. Pick list. Okay, good. And then this one is what? Number. A number. Okay. So now with this one, do we currently have anything in that field? Is there anything? No, there's nothing in that field. What's another thing that we, that what's, some, what's another word for something when that field is empty? I almost gave you the word. Okay, null, there's another word that we're looking for, blank, good. Okay, so, and that's what I wanted you to think of. I want you to start thinking of that, null or blank. Okay, so, and can include two functions, no more than two functions. I had a really hard time. I was trying to include three functions and using and, and you can't do it. It can only do two functions. So <clears throat> with this, we're going to do an and. And then whenever I do this function, I always like to, oh, nope, wrong button, and then here we're going to add, first we want to say, if the um, pick list is under 18, right? So what do you think we're going to use under the functions here? Yes, you're right. Is um, um, it is helpful to write it out in pseudocode. Um, myself, I'm not too particular in writing out in pseudocode. Um, and, and I've done uh, a few coding classes. I just I'm, I've never been that way. Is pick list right? Okay. So now, if we're going to pick this field right here, now all we're going to do is select a field. Best way to select a field is let's find one. So we have our student, and then we're going to come down. Let's find our field over under 18, insert. Now, what is that? What, what is it going to say? It's going to say, we're going to do parentheses, under 18. So if it says under 18, then that's what we want. We want it to search for. If that pick list says under 18, make sure that, okay, good. Now, what's the next thing we're looking for? What would we say? Okay, not this, not, not the null on this one is blank. Yep, that's exactly right. We want is blank. And we saw that one right here. And I'm going to back that one up just a little bit. And most of the time, actually, I like to put that right here. Okay, is blank. So what are we looking for is blank? Age, right? So we're going to come here, student, age, insert. And now we want to make sure, am I missing anything? Anybody's done, aha, yes, there we go. I am missing a parentheses. So if you've ever done any coding, you count your parentheses, opening and closing, or brackets, opening and closing, right? So you should always count your parentheses and your brackets. So if we take a look at that, we can look right here. Okay, there's an opening and a closing. And just for this sake, opening, and a closing because whenever you have an opening you have to have a closing opening there is no closing so i have to add another closing even if i do a check syntax and it says we're missing one don't count on that being there the 100 of the time saying you're missing the parentheses because it could be another error 
then you'll still say you're missing a parentheses. Now, if you if you want to also help it, you could do that too. So it will just make it look a little better for easier to read. Now check syntax, no errors found. So let's save this. Oh, wait, I forgot something. I forgot. Uh, uh, and I, um, I was going to say the error message. So the error message is the age must be filled out if the student is under the age of 18. Now we can have it at the top of the page or by the field. I like to have it, excuse me, I like to have it by the field of what's creating the error myself. Now let's save. Now let's jump over here. Let's go over to Fred. And this time let's refresh maybe two or three times. All right. So already, logically, we think there's an error. How come there's not an error on this page? This could be on your test. We just did a validation rule. Okay, good. This information was entered before I made the validation rule, right? So therefore that tells us validation rules are, they are not retroactive. Good, they are not retroactive. Okay, so now if I come over here, and I try to save it. Hopefully I refreshed enough. Boom, look at that. Okay, age. The age must be filled out if the student is under the age of 18. Now I come in here and I put 17 and now I click save. There we go. If I come in here and I do the drop down over 18 and I delete the age, I should be able to save it. And there we go, that's excellent. Now, if I wanna show you something that's kind of cool, also on the um, Lightning, Lightning App Builder. Okay, so if I come here and go to edit page, let's see if I could do this successfully today. And under here, if I jump over to a rich text box, and I'm going to put this rich text box right here. Now we see right here where it says, set component visibility, add filter. So here I can add student, is under the age of 18. Okay, let's make this correct, the student. But I want student to be big, bright, bold, underlined. Let's try this again. Uh, that was a mistype, thank you, is all right. The student is under the age of 18. <laughs> okay, good. Now let's make this bold, italic, underline, and how about we do it to where it's a, let's make it a little bigger because we want this here and let's make it red. There we go. Now we don't want this up all the time, right? So let's come down to the filter. So we're going to come here and say record field of instead of age, we're going to say over, uh, over, under, age of 18. And we're going to say equals under 18. And we're going to click done. Any questions so far?
Okay, now watch this. Save. Activate. Now, app default. Assign as an app default. Remember, previously we wanted org default. For this, I want this to be an app default. So I'm going to assign this as an app default and only for my Salesforce admin. Next. Yes, I want it for desktop and phone. Next. And then save. And let's save it one more time. And let's exit out. Why we just did app default? So that way, only on the app, on student, this will be the, um, this should be on the page. Only on this app, not on any other app. So for instance, if I come in here and then I change this to where it's under 18, and then I obviously now, if I try to save, our validation rule snagged, right? Let's put in 15. I click save. Hey, take a look at that. I changed that that rich text right there. It now says a student is under the age of 18. Some people call this a banner. The banner pops up, and now we have our validation rule. If I change this to where it says um, 18 and over, and I save it, it goes away. One more time. Under 18, save. And there we go. And then, um, and the student is under the age of 18. Any questions? Now, to answer your question, let's take a look at something. So we see that this is under the student um, tab, right? Or the student object. Let's go over to, let's go over to cells. Let's check out the student. Let's go to Fred Flintstone. Notice the student's age, under 18, there is no banner. That's Salesforce chatter, and it doesn't matter. It could, we could go under, but if we go back under Salesforce admin, and we go to student, Fred Flintstone, we have the banner. And then that's how you're able to set that page to where it's for the app under the Lightning App Builder. So what do you use if you don't want the over 18 to show only if ages are 18? Is that the validation? Now, are you talking about for the banner? No, I'm talking about when you go to this page, over under 18, I think I did this, but I don't remember how I did it. So when over under 18 field is not there, it only appears if age is a certain thing then it makes you, it makes it required for you to go into the over under. Oh, um, so then there, That's there's like another a, formula. You can, you could do another, um, there's another way you could do it. Is it validation? Is um, it yeah, um, Or is it? No, remember, um, with a, a validation, um, when it comes to a validation, what do validation rules do? Validate. Something. I like to say it this way. Validations verify. Oh, verify. Validation oh. rules verify. Because see, we like to say they validate, but no, they verify. So okay. all they're doing is they're checking information. And then this okay. is why sometimes people get validation rules confused with other kind of rules when it comes to our automation. Right. Validations rules verify. So if we look back at our validation rule, all it's doing is it's checking because it's checking for that is pick val that mm -hmm. the, uh, the pick list. If it says under 18, and then it's checking that if this is blank, it has to be filled. Okay. I'm saying I'm talking about a dependent field, right? Um now, now you're talking about the um multi pick list, I think. Well, like so. So like it's dependent yeah, on dependent age. Pick list. Yeah, you're talking about a, a multi-pick list. 
Yep. And then I'm um, sorry. Oh, I and you have to use a multi pick list for that. Um, which is which is a dependent pick list. Um, to mm -hmm. you're talking about to where if um if it's this, then it goes to another pick list. If it's this, then it goes to another pick list. Right. So it doesn't show it all on the first screen. It correct. makes it cleaner. Um, correct. And then um, I could tell you so far from my limited experience, um, most most people don't like those. Yeah. They're why? Don't. They oh, stay away from them. Why? I'm curious. Just why? I don't know really. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Okay. I, I haven't got that that far into it, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, okay. So thank you. Um, I think somebody see. had their hand up. I, I was talking. Sorry. Oh no, it's no problem. I'm not um, sure who it was. Muhammad, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Like, I got a question too. Sorry. Uh huh. Um, with the the banner, could we have used the uh the age field as well instead of the um the over under eighteen? Well, let's check it out. Uh, that's a good question. Um, excellent question. So let me get rid of my drawings here. Let's come over here and we can set up another component. Let's add a filter. So if we use the age, so then we're going to either say it's going to be um, equal to or we, yeah, we could say that it's greater than or less than equal. Less than, we, we, out here I would say it's greater than, um, or actually I would probably say um, less than, I would say it's less than 18. Let's try that. And then um, for some reason, let me move that. Something is in the way to where I can't see things correctly. And here we go. All right, there we go. Okay, so let's go over here and say less than 18. So it should not include 18 by this logic. So if we click done, let's click save. Oh, wait, let's get rid of this filter too. Actually, we don't have to get rid of that filter. No, we shouldn't have to get rid of that filter. Um, and close. Actually, I want to get rid of that filter. Let's just try this one. Save, activation, sign as app default. We already did. It's already assigned as the app default. Back, right here, close. All right, let's go back one. And let's put you over 18, just in case, let's put you to 48, save. Okay, now that goes away. Now let's change you to 18. And let's try to bring you down to 17. There we go. So you sure can. Thank you. You're welcome. Yep, great question. Great question. Um, right now, let me uh, check something here. Uh, make sure we covered quite a bit of information. We just have a couple of minutes left. I uh, don't want to go over time. Any other questions? So we covered, um, let's see here. Let's see if I can figure, fit, uh, have enough time to fit this in there real quick. Okay. Now, we've covered a lot. I want to go into, let's go into student again. What am I doing? Oh, I'm going in the wrong place. Whenever I start trying to go fast, I lose my brain. Okay, so let's go into our page layout. Now, when we're over here, Maybe let's go into account. Let's go into John Wicks. Ah, this is a good one. How do we change this information? Lightning. Um, back layout. Okay. So, oh, uh, yes, there we go. Good. Compact layout. Yes. Excellent. Compact layout. 
That is something um, very important to know. So under here, um, so you need to know your compact layout. I did not know that for a while. Um, and then, so let's actually jump over here. Let's go to our account and our compact layout. And then let's, and you can see here, um, it includes type phone, website, account owner, type phone, website, account owner. So if we want to come in here and change our, change this, then what we need to do, so how come when I come in here and I look at this, how come I can't edit this right now? And you may find the same over here with record types. There's nothing here for record types. <clears throat> Probably the because they are standard. Exactly. Exactly. Because they are standard. They're the master, you know, and so that that is 100% right. So I, uh, um, I have to either, for instance, under a record type, come over here and click new and or under compact layouts. If I want to do that, excuse me, um, I could come in here for the system be default and click clone and then um, do that uh, for uh, the assignment. Now under here for the um, uh, system assignment, there's nothing I can change here, but that's what I'm going to have to do. But right now for the sake of time, we just have two minutes left. We can explore that on another time frame. Um, any questions for anybody? I had a question. I was wondering if you could help us find the um, Stephen Trumbull formulas uh, that you mentioned. Because I, I did a Google, but I'm not getting anything. I want to make sure I'm looking at what you recommended. Yes, indeed. Um, These formulas are matter of fact, the bane of my existence. That, that probably would be a very easy find. Um, he and I are good friends. And then I have that right here in a message from him, which by the way, um, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, he and I are going to do a um, Salesforce Saturday. Um, this Saturday, we are going to talk about uh, another friend of mine. We are going to talk about, and here is the link. Copy that. I will put this here in. Thank you. Oh, it's not working. The Ooh, link doesn't work. Okay. Um, okay, so that one doesn't work. Then... That is under Udemy. Mm -hmm. So it's a Udemy course. Okay, so he has two courses right here. I'm going to, let me put this in the link real quick. And let's try this one. And he actually has two courses in there. And then um, one is for Omni Studio Consultant. Mm -hmm. And um, the other one is Learn Salesforce Formulas. Okay, good. And then um, you may be able to get that Salesforce Formulas. It shows up for $39.99. You may be able to get that a little cheaper. But okay. um, I could definitely say uh, um, reach out to him. You know, uh, he's always open to connect with anybody on LinkedIn. Reach out to him on LinkedIn. You see a connection there on Udemy. Say that, you know, hey, I'm new to Salesforce, so on and so forth. He's a great guy. You know, he may even be able to give you a discount code or something along those lines. And then what were the classes you're saying, the Saturday classes? I interrupted you. So I do Salesforce Saturdays at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. And that's uh, it's similar to a podcast. Um, last week, we did resumes. Um, this week, we're actually going to do... Um, we're going to talk about um, when you want to join a volunteer group, 
about um, whether it's a, a group kind of like uh, clicked um, or something to where you actually um, uh, you're, you're in a dev org and you're building a project and it is, you have like three or four weeks, you're in a sprint, you're building this out with this group. It's a fantastic experience. Um, whether you decide to organize it with your friends or if you're actually officially doing it like within clicked. Um, and then what kind of experiences you have with it? How does it benefit you? Things along those lines. Um, so that's going to be this Saturday. Next Saturday is actually going to be with Stephen Trumbull. And we're going to talk about formulas, how we got into Salesforce, things along those lines. But it's um, a little bit of a conversation, a little demonstration, and then uh, um, questions and answers. So, And your post is on your... Um... On yes. Here. Yes. Um, I do post this. YouTube. I, um, uh, I do post that on my YouTube as well. And um, that's, I started a new playlist for that and that's called Salesforce Saturdays with Steven. So, um, I just started that. Is it on this, uh, sorry. Is it the same, the same uh, Zoom link or is it a different? Um, no, that one's actually a different Zoom link. Um, uh, okay. um, but you can find me if you're connected with me on LinkedIn. Um, today, Hopefully I will be posting about that today um, on LinkedIn. And um, this one's going to be with Megan, Dr. Megan McGee. And um, so we, uh, she's also a, a friend of mine and she's a Salesforce admin, Salesforce consultant with Republic Finance. And um, previously she was a university professor. And um, so that's what's gonna be for the Saturday. Uh, but uh, let's see here. Did it, did um, give me one. No, I don't. I don't have that one immediately available for me. I'll try to get that. Uh, make sure that's available. Look for the post today, and um, I'm gonna try setting up something with a bunch of links. I know I'm a mess. Uh, that's why you guys are helping me out with this work <laughs> to get become better organized. You know. Um, but uh, any other questions before I get going? Great questions today. Thanks, everybody. Have a great evening and. Hopefully I'll see you on Saturday, 11 a.m. Central Standard What's gonna? Time. What's we doing next week? Are we gonna stay with Object Manager? Um, or are we gonna no, just actually, next week we are going to be moving to. Um, no, no, next week we are moving to. It will be data security. Yep. Organization-wide defaults, things along those lines. Yep, we'll be going to data security. Yes, it's going to be a fun one. <laughs> <laughs> so, fantastic. Okay, thanks so right. much. Have a good evening. I'll see everybody later. Bye. Bye-bye now.